Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed. And today, um, I'm just going to bring you with me as I go through some of my uh, grow up bins. And we're going to have a discussion based on a, a question that I had from one of my viewers. So, I've got my little notes here. Um, and what he asked was, how do you choose what kind of worms that you have? Um, you know, and that that's a loaded question, as anybody who has most of the worm types, like I do, has. Uh, you know, I started out with a, a two-pound bag of what I thought was red wigglers and European night crawlers, and it turned out to be red worms, blue worms, and euros, uh, which is fine for me. Um, but that's what I started out with. Many people buy a two pound or three pound bag from Uncle Jim's for 50 bucks or whatever. And uh, that's what you start with. Uh, so I didn't have a lot of choices because I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, with uh, more information comes more choices. So um, I'm not going to tell you what I did. Or I'm going to stop telling you what I did and tell you how I would do it again if I knew everything about worms and then started over. So what time of what kind of worm do you choose? Uh, I think the biggest factor for me would be um, where do you live? Do you live someplace that is uh, like my area, which it gets well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit here. And we also experience days that are 20 below zero Fahrenheit here. So my worms are um, inside worms. They live in my basement, as most people who are on the channel know. And uh, if you look at any of the playlists that I have for all my different worms, um, you know, most of them do a pretty good job here, inside. Now, if you're a person who's going to have your worms outside, then you really are kind of limited by whatever you know, climate you're in. So if you're in a climate like me and you want your worms to be outside, uh, you're going to, you know, probably, you know, have to expect some slowdown in the winter. And, uh, but then also, you know, you're, you're only going to be composting with worms half the year because of the limitations of the temperature. So if I had to do things outside, like my outside compost bin, um, I would probably stick with the compost mix that I have now, red wigglers and European night crawlers. Not so much the blue worms on purpose, just because they'll die because they're a tropical worm. Now, if you live in a tropical place, then, you know, I would definitely use the African night crawlers or the blue worms. They are good, you know, almost, you know, to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, if I understand things correctly. Um, so you don't have to worry about them getting overheated and just desiccating on you like you would the red worms and the European night crawlers. <clears throat> so that would be one consideration is, you know, where do you live? And if the answer is someplace tropical, you can, you know, do all of them, but red wigglers and the such will not do as well in hot temperatures. And, of course, the tropical worms, like the blues and the African night crawlers, they won't do as well in cooler climates, or even in my basement, as I found out. Um, I did originally keep my African night crawlers in my basement, and in the wintertime it gets to be 45, 50 degrees here in the basement, and the red wigglers and the European night crawlers are just happy as can be. But my African night crawlers pretty much started dying off on me. Um, so, you know, I had to move them upstairs in order to protect, to protect my in investment. I bought five pounds of African night crawlers, and that cost me about 80 bucks, $90, I think. And that was about three years ago. So... Uh, that's the first consideration is where do you live and where are you going to keep your worms? Um, second of all, any, for anybody who's keeping track, that was my um, worm chow bin that I just did. And that has the uh, regular compost mix of worms in there. 
And I think this is my mushroom bin that I'm working on now. Um, so then, so like I said, where do you live? You know, I, that might also limit what you're, you know, able to purchase. You know, maybe not all worms are available everywhere. I mean, in the United States, um, you can pretty much get, uh, you know, red worms, blue worms, European night crawlers, African night crawlers, um, jumper worms. Um, I'm not sure what else there is. Come to think of it, that's about it. But you can buy whatever you want here. Um, so, but some of them, you know, I think if you live someplace not the United States, it might be difficult for you to even purchase certain kinds of worms. Um, so that was my, my thing on where do you live. So then, you know, I would also say, why are you doing this? Why, why do you want to have a worm farm? And in my case, what I'm doing is I'm trying, you know, my original goal was to basically prevent things from going into a landfill. I've been composting outside, just a regular old compost pile for years and years. You know, you just, you know, alternate between carbon and nitrogen and wet it down every once in a while and harvest it once a year. Um, but then when I expanded into worms, um, you know, then I started thinking about what do I do with my table scraps? What am I throwing in the garbage? So it wasn't just about what am I doing with my grass clippings and my leaves. It became what am I doing with my leftover macaroni and, and salad and things. So that's when we got into the worms, um, which I actually got into originally for the bonsais. It's really good, organic, non-harmful, won't burn anything. So originally, I mean, to be completely clear, my, my goal for the worm castings was for the bonsais, because worm castings are expensive. And I thought, I can do that. And then I started to see all the possibilities of what you can do with worms and you know all the problems they can solve so at that point it became more about keeping things out of the landfill and it's been amazing um, people at work I have you know got the community involved um, everybody asks me what can what, you know can your worms eat this can your worms eat that uh, so you know it's kind of also a novelty but so if you have, you know, a farm or a hobby farm, um, or if you are out in the country and you're allowed to have chickens or animals, or if you have horses, um, you know, you can have horse manure as your primary food. So with me, I'm a, uh, I live out, out in the country, but I'm really kind of a suburban kind of lifestyle here. Um, the only livestock I have are worms. So what they're going to eat is whatever I eat or whatever is in my yard for whatever reasons. Yeah, that does look dry. I agree. I can feel the people telling me it's dry. It needs moisture. Um, <clears throat> so they eat what I have available, and I think that's another choice that people have is what do you have available to feed the worms? If you've got a family of four or eight or, or whatever, if you're vegetarian, you know, you're set. Because the worms will definitely dig whatever you're eating. Um, uh, mine eat, I mean, you can look here. This is junk mail. This is the mushroom bedding from my son's growing of mushrooms. Um, probably a little coconut corn here. But they, they eat whatever it is that I, I throw at them from my own life. But if you have pet horses or chickens or whatever, goats, you could conceivably, you know, primarily be feeding some kind of manure um, to the worms. In which case, uh, from what I understand, red wigglers are literally the best thing you could ever get for that kind of situation. In fact, at least here in the United States, um, red wigglers will naturally show up if there's a big pile of horse manure. So if that's what you're trying to do is take care of your animals wastes um, outside, then you know red wigglers are definitely you know something that you would like um, and if you're in a country that doesn't support red wigglers then maybe blues. 
Um, but if your main component is you got a lot of leaves, you have a lot of yard waste that is carbon in nature, you're definitely going to want a nightcrawler of some kind, African nightcrawler or European nightcrawler. Um, if you look at a playlist of mine for the African nightcrawlers, you will see even from the beginning when I first bought them, I put maybe three times what the volume of this is of leaves in a bin for them. And within a month, it was just all castings. Um, they were a lot bigger worms at the time, but they do an amazing job, the night crawlers do, with carbon kinds of stuff. Um, the red wigglers and the blue worms, if that's what you have a lot of, let's say you're a vegetarian or a vegetarian family of four, red wigglers, hands down, they will blow through more vegetables and fruit than you know most things you can throw at them, especially if it's been frozen or it's been pureed. I mean, they'll eat it as fast as, you know, day by day. Um, when I have apples that I harvest, I will throw them in the freezer and then run them through a pureer if I'm not going to use them and then feed them to the worms. Or I'll use the leftovers from juicing. And I'm not kidding you, it's unbelievable, especially in the warmer months, how fast they can go through vegetables. So let's see, what have we talked about? We've talked about uh, what kind of uh, climate do you live in? Are you going to have inside worms or outside worms? Are you going to have, I was just in this bin. Why is this already fluffed up? Okay, this is one of the bins that's in the finishing mode. Um, let's see, where was I? So what do you have to feed? If you have a lot of carbon related things, then you know that's going to need a night crawler. And if you have a lot of nitrogen stuff like fruits and vegetables and grains, then you're definitely going to want the red wigglers or the blue worms. Um, but then, you know, there's also the individuals that are raising worms for an additional reason, which is to feed their pets or to go fishing. So, and then they're going to feed whatever it takes to make the worms be whatever size is, you know, needed for the animal or for fishing. So, if you have uh, blue worms, you're going to be super disappointed if you're going to go fishing, which you'll see here in a second. I've got my, my worm trap here where I've been trapping out the remaining remaining worms in this bin. I think this might be the last time I do this. Don't see any more worms. So let me take this and dump this out. So if you're looking at, you know, feeding your lizards, then, you know, the blue worms are just fine. That's a good snack size worm there. Um, if you're wanting to go fishing, um, you're probably going to want a red wiggler, which this is a small red wiggler, but it's, you know, they will grow to a size that will be appropriate for fishing. Um, you know, probably more along the lines of European night crawlers if you want to go fishing. Um, so, but if you just look at the different size worms here in this pile, because most of my bins are the, the mix of all three. Um, you can see that, you know, these would be good to feed to an animal, but not to go fishing with. You'd want to bulk them up by feeding like a worm chow or something. Now, if you're looking at the blue worms, like this one right here, they are never going, you can't feed them enough grain to make them a big worm. Um, they they just simply are very skinny little worms. That's just how they are. There's nothing you can do about it. That's naturally what's happening there. Um, they will, you know, drive you nuts if you try and feed them enough grain or whatever to try and bulk them up. Um, so I would not recommend getting blue worms if you want them for fishing. But if you want them to feed to your lizard, 
small lizard, not like big, huge lizard. Like if you have a monitor lizard that's three pounds and six feet long, I don't think you're going to want blue worms. But if you have a little, you know, gecko or spiny or what have you, these would be a good size, you know, feeder worm. I'm going to add these to the big boy here. Trying to do two things at once. Um, so, you know, you have to have a kind of a combination of things of, of what you're going to do. So if you want fishing worms, um, you know, you are probably going to have to feed a little heavier. You might have to supplement with worm chow. But if you want them for composting your food, then, you know, your red wigglers, your European night crawlers, the, your Uncle Jim's mix, perfectly fine. I highly recommend it. I know some people that just want to have one kind of worm or another are kind of annoyed by the fact that you get wor blue worms for free. Um, but they breed very quickly and they do a very good job. Which in my case is all I need. Oops. Where you go? I'm just going to go through this uh, one more time to see anybody's left before I throw this in the garden. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you want big worms, you're going to have to supplement. Regular table scraps is not going to be enough. Yard scraps is not going to be enough. You know, and then looking at your lifestyle, you know, how much time do you have to devote to this when you're looking at, you know, if you have a young family and you're always going from here to there with sports and, and dance and, and all of that business, you're not going to have a lot of time. So you're going to want something simple, um, like just a regular bin like this. This is just a regular tote that you buy at any kind of Home Depot, Walmart, whatever. I don't keep lids on them. They tend to stay put if they don't have a lid. It's counterintuitive, I know. But if the sides stay dry, then they don't move around. Um, I think that's basically why that happens. So how would I choose my worms if I had to do over again? Um, I probably would not get the African night crawlers. Not in zone 5, I would not get African night crawlers. I would stick to the, the Uncle Jim's mix. You know, my goal is to create castings out of the stuff that I have to feed them and they do a wonderful job of that. They're relative, relatively cheap. Uh, my worms uh, showed up alive. Um, they're good about replacing things if they don't show up alive. Um, but if you just want one type of worm, if you had to choose, like your desert island worm, what kind of worm would you get? Uh, I, got, I gotta go with, uh, I prefer the, the European night crawlers because I just like looking at them. But for usability, the red wigglers are 100%, you know, the fastest composters that there is. They reproduce really fast, and um, they're natural in my climate. I don't have to worry about them becoming an invasive species because they live here. Um, so that would be, you know, my, my take home is consider where do you live? What do you have to compost? And what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And so, you know, if you want to make castings, which was my original goal, was to make castings, um, then you go back one and say, what do I have to make castings out of? If you have a lot of leaves and stuff, then you're going to want, you know, European night crawlers. I think it's easier to just have a mix because depending on whatever day it is that I uh, have food to feed them, you know, if they get a bunch of leaves, the European night crawlers are there to consume it. If I have a bunch of melon, then the, the blue worms and the red wigglers will take care of it. If it gets kind of hot outside and the red worms and the European night crawlers slow down a little bit, the blue worms will pick up the slack when there's heat. And then when it gets cold in the basement um, and the blue worms slow down, then the European night crawlers and... Um, Red wigglers will pick up the slack, 
and will do things. So I actually think that the having multiple kind of worms is the benefit because no matter what you feed them, there will always be a worm that is good, good at taking care of it. I could have swore I just saw a worm there. All right, guys, you better perk up or you're going to be outside worms here in a minute. So that is my story about what kind of worms do I think people should get if they're available. Um, you have to ask yourself, why are you doing it? What do I have to feed them? Um, those are your two important questions. And of course, you know, if you're tropical or if you live in, you know, some place where it gets cold, then, you know, the tropical worms are going to be a pain in the butt like they are for me. Mine are upstairs living in my dining room. Um, so now I'm just rambling. I'm, I'm rambling about my worms. Love talking about worms. Well, I've got a worm channel. It gives me an opportunity to talk to people about worms that will want to hear me go on and on about my worms. Because God knows there are people that I talk to about my worms that would probably rather I didn't tell them about my worms. Am I right? Does anybody else have that? You start talking about your compost worms, people are like, oh, got to go. I've got an appointment. Or is that just me? Well, anyway, any way you look at it, that's the story about what kind of worm do you get. And uh, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. But wait, if you want to learn about worms, I have all kinds of playlists for all different kinds of worms. You can go look at the playlist. I've got one for European night crawlers, I've got one for African night crawlers, red wigglers, and then of course all the rest of the compost worms. I have nicely packaged playlists that you can look for. All right, well, thank you for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.